What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're back in Space Engineers, back on planets, and what I wanted to do today was kind of answer that question that's come up a lot in my comments of how much weight, how many thrusters do I need on my ship, how much weight can a thruster support in gravity? So what I've got in front of me here is a kind of test rig designed to, to both test atmospheric thrusters and hydrogen thrusters. But I got about halfway through my testing, trying to sort of, there's a nice mass equation, but I figured that it would be nice to sort of test it and show you guys live how it all works. And I ran into some interesting anomalies, some bits that don't quite add up. So let me just explain the testing process first, and then I'll talk a little bit about the anomalies. So basically, we have these cages designed to hold these ships, and what we've got is a thruster on override at max with a container on top and just the necessary for it to all function. The gyro is on there just to override and hold it upright for me. So the idea here is we can go in and have a look at the grid mass, and then we can slowly add cargo to the cargo container. Now, admittedly, we're in creative, so I can do all this really easily, hold infinite amounts of cargo. The important part is thrust to weight ratio does not change between creative and survival. So a thruster holds exactly the same amount in creative as it does in survival. And at the end, I'll just switch over and quickly demonstrate that so you guys know that I've actually gone and tested all that side of things as well. And the idea here is we've got them on override, both because this is sort of the, the best case example. This is the most amount of thrust that this can produce but also because there's some slightly strange behavior if you have it on dampers only. So if I turn this all the way off, and I'll try not to have it fall out the sky when I do so, you're about to see that this is actually going to slowly fall. And I found, this might be my system, but I found that all ships with gyroscopes on it in atmosphere and all atmospheric thruster ships do this slowly. They just ever so slowly drip out of the sky. And unfortunately, in doing so, I have let loose this one. So let's just put it back in, back in the cage and get it back onto the top of the cage so that we can do the override thing again. So we're just slowly going to bring this up. Up you go. Back up to the top of your cage, please. And I'm not very good at pasting that in, so let's do that one more time. Just align it up, and there we go. So everything's back in, ready for testing, and you can get the idea of how this is going to work. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with this one because this is the anomaly. So the important parts is we have the 350 kilonewtons of thrust, and then we've got the grid mass. So at the moment is 26,327. And what we're going to do is just add cargo to it slowly. And you can see if I put a load in now, the grid mass won't update for some reason until you go out and back in again. And then when you do, you can see that that's added. We added the 10,000, and that 10,000 has gone on to the number. So that's all correct. And we're just going to keep going until this can no longer support itself. And of course, I've done this in advance, so I know the sort of numbers we're looking at. And with this one, it's about 70,000. So we're going to keep increasing this until the grid weight gets up to the point where you can see we're very close now, and you can see how it's kind of starting to shift. This is why I had to build the box to contain them, is because they like to move around a little bit once they start floating. But you can get the idea. 70,000 is going to be this thing's limit. So if we just add, how far off are we? 68,000. So we add another 1,800. It's now going to ever so slowly start to fall. We're a little bit over and you can see it's just falling ever so slightly. And if we were to turn the dampers off, I'm not going to do it for risk of breaking the thing like I did last time, but if we were to turn the dampers off you would see obviously it would have that intrinsic little bit of fall that it had before, but at the same time the dampers would still be able to hold it. And it looks like this one might come out of the box again and you can see we've just taken enough off that it's now floating rather than sort of slowly dropping. In fact, there you go, it's ever so slightly going up because that was the limit. It's that 70,000 limit and we're just below it. The reason that that's an anomaly is when you come to test some of the other thrusters. So a really good example is the small ship large thruster because this one has a very similar amount of thrust. So you see this is 340 kilonewtons, that one was 350 kilonewtons. So these two should perform pretty much the same you would imagine. The thing is they really really don't. So that one was holding 70,000. If you remember, that was our magic number. And in here, we can see our grid mass is 6.5k. It's nothing because it's such a small ship. And what we're going to do is something utterly ridiculous, like add 155,000 kilograms that should make it drop to the floor like a stone. Except it doesn't. Not even slightly. For some reason, the thrust calculations between the different thrusters are just really off. Not even close to correct. So we can add, I think my magic number for this is about 230,000 kilograms of mass 
this thrusters can, can support, which is great news when it comes to sort of survival mode, because these are nice and efficient, really easy to build. These are your early game bread and butter. But it's not very good when it comes to working out things using maths, because maths does not work here. You can see we're up to 196,000. In the control panel, 340 kilonewtons. We can go over and check this one again, and you'll be able to see that this is 350 kilonewtons and is only holding 70k. So the numbers at the moment are pretty screwy. They don't add up quite like you'd expect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put enough in. In fact, all we'll, what we can do is just try the dampers trick just to show that, as expected, this can hold itself under dampers as well. So if we bring that all the way down, you can see it's going to stop itself quite happily and then it'll do that slow falling thing that I demonstrated at the start. And we can keep adding ore in here and it's going to keep supporting itself until we get up to about 230,000 kilograms, which is a huge amount. It's great for efficiency's sake, but it does mean that anybody who's trying to use maths to work this stuff out at the moment, unfortunately, is not going to get the right answers because the right answers don't pay any attention to maths at all. So you can see we're 230,000 kilograms, and the only drop we're getting there is from the fact that we've got the dampers on. If I was to go in and turn the thruster right up to the top, you can see now it's actually ever so slightly going up because we aren't quite at the 230 maximum. So the final ones to test are the large ship large, which, as you can probably guess, is capable of holding a ridiculous amount. Uh, to demonstrate this, there's 2 million to start off with. So grid mass is now over 2 million already. And we can add loads of these in. Let's have a look. There we go. So 3.6 is a little bit too much. I might not be able to get this stuff out in time before it crashes. Don't. Ah. It's crashed, hasn't it? Yep. Okay, I can tell you the magic number for those are 3.4 million kilograms for a large ship, large thruster, the atmospheric ones. And then, of course, over here, we've got the deity little small ship atmospheric thrusters. And these don't seem to have the same problem as the large ship small atmospheric thrusters. These seem to hold a pretty sensible amount of weight. It's not an amount of weight that makes sense as far as maths con is concerned, but it's a sensible amount. So if you remember, we had the, 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 large, the small ship large atmospheric over there with its 340 kilonewtons of thrust was capable of holding 230,000 kilograms of ore. So this has only actually got 65 kilonewtons. So it's, we're talking about something that's less than a quarter of the total thrust of that other one. And yet again, things don't quite make sense. So grid mass in here is currently 10,000. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another 10, another 20,000 to that. So our grid mass is now 30,000.8. So again, we've already made the maths not really add up. That's too much. It should not be able to carry this much. But what we can do... Oh, damn it, I clicked on that by mistake. Okay, as far as tests are concerned, I have balls this one up pretty special. But I can now tell you the numbers because obviously these are going to get changed. This is not physics. <laughs> this is not maths. I would be very surprised if these stay the same because, to be honest, you need to be able to work out using some sort of calculator how much thrust you need on a ship these days. But for the time being, as things currently stand, Large ship, large atmospheric thrusters can hold 3.4 million kilograms of ore and produce 4.5 meganewtons. Then you have small atmospheric thrusters, so small large ship atmospheric thrusters. This is the broken one, the anomaly, with its 350 kilonewtons that only supports 70,000 kilograms of ore, or weight. You have the small ship large, which are really efficient, really good things. 340 kilonewtons of power, but holding up 230. So the final thing I'll do is just bring up on the screen all the various information so you can kind of compare it for yourself. Pause it if you want to get the numbers down as to how the thrusters stack up. But it's very much the case that the large ship small atmospheric thruster is way down the bottom of the list. And that small ship large atmospheric thruster performs really well, as does the large ship large atmospheric thruster. So I hope you found this one interesting, guys. It's bound to change, unfortunately, because I do believe that this it can't stay as it is. The math does need to work. It does need to be consistent across all of the engines. Otherwise, people are constantly going to be confused about how much thrust is relevant at any given time. But at least maybe it's useful for the time being until some of this stuff gets sorted. 
for you to work out what you need to keep your ships in the air and what the most efficient thruster is because there is definitely more efficient ones and less efficient ones within the same bracket. So if you did like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe, it does help me and the channel out. And if you didn't, you got a problem with my methodology, something wasn't done quite right, hit me up in the comments down below, let me know how I can improve. I know I'm far from perfect. So thanks a lot for watching guys, and I'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.